Fala aí pessoal, hoje eu estou com mais um vídeo para vocês, eu acho que vocês vão gostar bastante. Hoje eu estou no laboratório da Corsair. Obviamente a gente não pode mostrar tudo, acho que não pode mostrar nem 10%, mas tem muita coisa. É, eu pedi para eles mostrarem, explicarem algumas máquinas, alguns aparelhos para a gente e a gente vai conhecer isso agora. Eu espero que vocês achem legal. Vamos mostrar para vocês alguns itens do laboratório, como é que eles fazem para avaliar os produtos. Esse aqui é um, um forno de meio ambiente. É, can you explain about this, this product? Sure, we're currently testing the, the new H80i GT cooler in here. Uh, we're running this in the chamber so we have a st stable temperature environment. And the temperature in the lab fluctuates a couple of degrees. Um, since these coolers are such high performance, a couple of degrees really matters a lot. So we maintain the temperature in here consistently. When we run the test, we generate load on the processor, and then we measure the temperature after a certain amount of time passes. Can you show it working? Sure. It's actually on right now. Just click this button here. And so this is a processor temperature in real time. It takes about 30 minutes for it to stabilize. Oh. So we'll record the data after it's come up and reached a stable temperature. So you run some time of stress uh, software? Yeah. This is the Intel Power Thermal Utility, which is the most abusive test that one can run on a processor. Okay. Um, these tools are not publicly available, so we also run A to 64 and Fermark for results that we're going to advertise so that people can try to duplicate them on their own. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Agora eu vou mostrar para vocês uma coisa muito interessante. É a maneira que eles testam as fontes. Elas vão ser aprovadas ou reprovadas aqui. Depois do projeto, que é uma coisa que eu não posso mostrar, a fonte passa por esse sistema. Vocês vão ver que tem esse croma e tem os osciloscópios e os test loaders da fonte. Ela passa por esse é, environment chamber, que é um simulador de ambiente, onde ela vai ser testada na temperatura de 25, 40 ou 50 graus Celsius. Após aprovada ou reprovada, ela passa por uma linha de controle. Hear the sound of music drifting in the aisles Elevator Prozac stretching on for miles Music of the future will not entertain It's only meant to repress and neutralize your brain So Can you explain a, a little bit about this equipment? Sure, sure. Here we have a Chroma, a Model 8000 ATE, uh, same equipment that they have in the factories that they use to test the power supplies on the production line and in the uh, R&D labs. Um, we have a power supply set up here, um, uh, ready for test. We use this tester extensively for all our qualification. Um, it's uh, able to do testing pretty much A through Z uh, and uh, does it very precisely. We also have an environmental chamber here which we use for testing uh, through our temperature range currently it's 0 to 40, 50 degrees C. Um, that's pretty much what we do here. We also have other equipment and other labs where we do compatibility testing for our power supplies also. Excellent. Now I will introduce you uh, my friend uh, Guillermo. He's the best expert in cooling. Hey, hey Brasil, welcome to our lab. Hey Guillermo, talk a little bit about this machine. So um, this is our wind tunnel here. Uh, this is Bobby, by the way. Uh, Bobby, our friend here. Um, and this is where we test our fans. Uh, in Brazilian, it's ventiladores. 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 Yeah. But we also test uh, resistance curves for different filters or, or um, uh, surfaces we put our fans next to on cases. Uh, so from here we can test how much resistance is going to happen uh, to the airflow, airflow flowing through here and, and get a feeling for how much we are obstructing it. Uh, Bobby can show you a little demo of, of a test here. Can you show sure. it to work it? Yeah, let me show you on a fan because this is more interesting to watch. The way this system works is that we have two air chambers 
separated by a, a valve plate. The valves are of a known diameter. And when we pass air through the system, we measure the differential pressure in the two chambers, and that allows us to measure flow. We also measure the pressure on the back side of the chamber right here, which allows us to say what the static resistance is. Oh, I'm sure that's there. So the system here can generate any voltage. It can generate PWM signals. It can run the, it monitors the TAC output. It measures the ambient temperature, which is here, and um, also measures the temperature of a wet, wet bulb sensor and a dry bulb sensor, calculates relative humidity, measures the barometric pressure, and that allows me to, to precisely know what the air density is so that I can exactly calculate the volume. Let's just run a quick test here. Oh, it's nice. So now the machine will generate a, a signal to start up and run the fan at 100%. First thing it does is determine the maximum pressure point. So for this particular fan, it will be about 3.2 millimeters of water. Once it stabilizes, it will begin opening the valves, which it does hydraulically, and uh, you'll hear it. Vou mostrar mais uma coisa que tinha escapado. Fala pra gente. What we have here is a PQ curve for an H75 radiator, which is this line here. The SP120 LED fans that we just announced, and the SP120 Quiet Edition fans that we've been shipping for a while now. So when you look at the box for these fans, they tell you here's the pressure and here's the flow. But when you put them in front of a radiator, this is the actual pressure and flow that you will get from an SP120 Quiet Edition fan, and this is the actual pressure and flow that you would get from a new LED Edition fan. So we go from about 19 CFM at about 0.75 inches of water or milliliters of water to 23 CFM to about 0.85 millimeters of water. Isso é mais uma coisa que a maioria das pessoas não sabe. Existe muita tecnologia na construção dos fãs. É, a gente precisa ter uma pressão estática adequada, uma rotação adequada para que ele possa promover é, a refrigeração de uma maneira correta e da forma que, que é desejada pela empresa. Mais uma coisa que eu vou mostrar do laboratório da Corsair é o seguinte, é um data logger, um data logger. É, can you explain, uh, Bobby, about the, the data logger? Sure. What the data logger does is it measures the voltage drop across this current sense resistor right here, and that, that all the power that flows into this dim flows through that resistor. So by measuring that, I can tell exactly how much power this memory dim is consuming at any one given time. I can overclock the dim and see how much that affects the power. I can change the voltage. Uh, the, the system also measures the voltage, uh, one of the other ones does. And then all of that data comes back to the data logger, as well as up to four temperature probe inputs, where I can measure the temperature on the dim, so I can compare different heat sink proposals and heat sink designs, as well as measuring the ambient temperature for normalization purposes. This thing outputs all of that data on a USB cable, goes to my laptop or my desktop, and I can save the data there, graph it all out, and look at it for later use. Oh, okay. Bom, agora eu vou apresentar para vocês o Pascoal. Here's Pascoal. He will talk a little bit about headset. Opa, tô falando alto, né? Esse aqui é o um modelo novo aí da Corsair, de, da Corsair Gaming, que saiu agora. Ele vai explicar um pouco de como que eles testam o, o headset pra gente. Can you talk a little bit? How did you test it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, we do two different types of tests. We do a hardware and we do a software testing. Uh, basically, we want to validate the, the, the functionality of them. Uh, we want to make sure that... Uh, it, it functions the way it should, sounds the way it should, and uh, operates the way it should. Basically, um, that's that's pretty much it. So every time we get we get new software drops, new versions, we always have to test it. We have to verify it, and we have to make sure that it's a RC release, candidate release. Um, sometimes they're not, so we go through uh, a variety of different versions before we have one that we can release to the public. Okay. How about the the keyboards? Can keyboards? Can, yeah, yeah, I have some keyboards okay. over here. And cool. so as you the can gamers see, will love. Yeah, so you see I have two keyboards already set up. I have a, a K95, which I just unplugged because I'm installing some and testing some new uh, firmware that we just got dropped today. Yeah, <laughs> I like to keep the boxes. <laughs> okay. And uh, testing the, the K70. Uh, just basically, so there's there's three things we, we mainly uh, focus on for, for keyboards and for mice, of course. Uh, the things that we focus on is firmware update. Right, we want to make sure that you can update the, uh, the firmware through the UI perfectly. Uh, we also te after test the hardware without software. So we want to make sure that the firmware functions perfectly with the, the actual keyboard itself. Then after we do that, then we test the software and 
the firmware and the hardware all in one. And then we validate all that, and once it's released, or once it's ready to release, then we, we give the okay, and then we put it out in sight. So it's a lot of work because we have to do all those combinations for Windows 7, for Windows 8.1. We have to do it for Vista, and we have to do it for all the different keyboards that are out there, the different layouts and, and the different mice for HID. Thank you, RGB. Pascual. Very good. Thank you. Nice. Uma coisa muito legal que eu vou mostrar para vocês é como que eles fazem a pintura. A pintura do gabinete, ela tem que ser analisada com várias iluminações diferentes. Uma coisa que as pessoas não sabem é que o próprio calor ou a secagem do gabinete pode fazer com que ele tenha alterações de cor. Então é muito difícil de se ajustar uma cor especificamente como eles querem. Então aqui a gente tem o gabinete o pink, esse aqui é o verde da NVIDIA, esse aqui é da Dodge, é o laranja Dodge, esse é o, o, fe, o vermelho Ferrari e o azul deles. É, vocês não sabem o trabalho que dá para chegar nessas cores. Muitas vezes a pessoa fala, ah, não é minha preferida, mas assim como o gosto é uma coisa pessoal, o que você pode não gostar, outra pessoa pode adorar e vice-versa. Então, quer dizer, existe esse, esse cuidado, esse procedimento para se escolher as cores do gabinete. I noticed you have uh, a lot, lots of CPUs, motherboards, and uh, lots of hardware here. Uh, and you assemble lots of different computers. Why mm -hmm. are you doing this? Basically, we have uh, a set of systems that we built to do um, thermal testing. Because when we built a case or design a case, we, we measure everything, right? Uh, Performance-wise, functionality-wise, this is what we do in, in validation, basically. So we have a set of hardware that is always maintained for consistency. Uh, so we can measure the performance of the, the thermal performance of the case. Um, and after we, we, get, we collect all the data, we gather them, we collect them together, and we, and we present it to the case designer team and also the, the engineering. So they can basically look at the data and then they, they measure it and they, they do their, you know, all the calculation and stuff and see if it, it will it will perform uh, better than our previous case, uh, com uh, competitive analysis and and so on, um, and then make the changes or alteration based from that data that we get. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Eu gostaria de ter mostrado para vocês muito mais coisas, mas como eu falei, é segredo de fábrica. Os próximos vídeos nós devemos estar fazendo no nosso laboratório, que tem muita coisa nova e muita coisa legal para mostrar para vocês. Eu espero que vocês tenham gostado e daqui a pouco a gente volta com outro vídeo. Valeu por acompanhar!